Good afternoon again, everyone. This is Dan with Senior E-Bike Nation. Hey, it's going to be uh, segment number two of the video. We're going to pick up what we talked about on uh, bike regulations. As far as us content creators, we're keeping an eye on all this stuff for you guys. As far as regulations and states and what we think about them and where we think the uh, industry is headed for e-bikes. And we really do see some major changes coming in up in the next couple, three years if I had to guess. Unfortunately, with all the bike manufacturers uh, that are out there now, they're making these bikes way too fast. I mean, you got the Suron and you've got some other bikes that uh, I'll do 35 to 40 mile an hour. And for a senior, which I am, I'm 72, that's the name of my channel, Senior E Bike Nation. We don't want to see speed, we want to see a lot more range on a battery, we want to see uh, good quality components on a bike. And we're willing to spend a little more money to get those things. I mean, I think this bike right now is uh, on this Juice Rip Current S. I think it's uh, retailing right now for, I think it's $2,099. I'll change that on the video if I have to. But this bike has not dropped very much <clears throat> since they rolled it out. And I also own the Cy Rusher Ranger, same thing. That bike is still $27.99 plus tax, as far as I know. So some of these really good quality uh, bikes that they're building, they're not having to drop the price much on these things. Because they're selling very well the way they are. A buddy of mine up in New Hampshire, Gary, E-Bikes Adventures, uh, you guys definitely want to check his channel out. He's got a phenomenal bike channel. Again, Gary's E-Biking Adventures. I'll try to put that in the description box for you. He's uh, He just picked up the newest model of the Juiced Rip Current. And uh, tends to really like it. But he put a, ba a dual battery set up on that bike. Which he likes to do with a lot of his bikes. He'll just use uh, blend the battery pack into the controller or... And some people, like Citizen Cycle, and Gary may do this as well, where they're putting a front hub motor on and also uh, running them individually from the uh, rear hub motor. I don't like to do a lot of modifications on the bikes. I mean, I'll put some accessories on like mirrors and seat posts, seat post suspensions, things that I really need um, for safety. But as far as changing the, uh, the bike around, the way it comes from the manufacturer, I don't like to do that so much. I want to keep these things as simple as I can on my uh, description of a bike ride here. And if I keep adding a bunch of stuff, it's not the true metrics of what that bike's going to do. Now it, uh, there's a lot of components out there you can put on a bike. You can change almost anything on an e-bike now. But again, I'm not looking for speed. I'm doing 18.25 right, mile an hour right now, and I may bump it just a little bit as I'm riding, but typically I'll try to stay between the 18 to 20 mile an hour speed because that is the limit of the bike trail. But I'll put a description for you guys down in uh, link to all the stuff I bought for my accessories for the bikes. Mirror seats, phone holders, everything of that nature. I'll get you guys a link to all those and put them down in the description box. I'll probably bump it up to pedal assist four here just a little bit. 
Now, once you get the pedal assist five on this, you're actually into race mode. So you've got sport mode, you've got eco mode at the lower levels, and then you got race mode at the top. I typically ride in uh, ninth gear on this. That's um, this has got a nine gear cassette on it. So I typically stay in the uh, highest gear. Unless I'm climbing hills and I want to conserve battery, I'll kick it back down on the to a lower gear. But for the most part, we'll leave things the way they are. This bike's got very good suspension. I'm going over some pretty rough bumps here and the bike's handling it really well. I can't hardly believe people out right are running in shorts in this kind of weather, but to each his own, I guess. Got a guy up there running in shorts. This here is exactly why you stop at these stop signs. I see so many guys blowing through those things and that would have been a bad situation if that guy wasn't looking on your left. I've got three uh, 26 inch uh, fat tire bikes. Two of them are four inch fat tires and one of them is a three inch fat tire. But uh, between this one, the Cy Rusher Ranger, they're two of my better bikes as far as the 26 go. On your left, on your right. I don't like using bells and horns. I mean, I could use the horn on this. It's gonna scare the crap out of somebody, as you can hear. So uh, I kind of like, like hollering on your left or on your right, and they, they hear me. But yeah, I uh, been in the hospital with my wife since Sunday afternoon into, <clears throat> excuse me, to Wednesday afternoon. I have my previous video that you guys, if you guys watched that she had a blood clot in her spleen, which is very uncommon, is what the doctor told me. So they got her on a bunch of blood thinners right now to, uh, of course, make sure no other clots uh, start. And hopefully the uh, blood thinner she's on, I think, is which which is Eliquis. Eliquis. It uh, hopefully will um, keep that um, blood clot from getting any bigger and maybe dissolve it. So that's our hope. But I finally got back uh, Wednesday afternoon, and I got to ride yesterday a little bit and do a little bit of drone footage and. Riding my side rusher Ovi, and today again I'm on my Juice Rip Current S. And I'll be doing a little drone footage when I get once I get up to a real good open area. We'll be doing that as well. But yeah, one good thing about these um, torque sensors, you're gonna get a lot more exercise because you gotta really put some effort into those pedals. As I mentioned on my videos before, I have bone on bone in both of my knees and I'm Really, really trying to avoid any kind of knee replacements. I used to walk five miles a day every day, and uh, it was too much um, trauma on my uh, knees, just pounding at pavement all the time. So my doctor said I'm walking too much, so I had to cut that back, but then it was still hurting. and. Using Advil and some uh, anti-inflammatories helped a little bit. But I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna try to ride a bike. And then I picked up my first e-bike, uh, Aerial Rider Rydell. I bought on Marketplace for $750. The guy had just bought it, but he wanted a faster bike because he took it to work and back every day. So I rode that one for like 2,700 miles, then uh, sold it to a buddy of mine. And since then, I purchased the Cy Rusher Komoda, and then uh, every other bike since then, 
except one bike I paid half for on the Antioche AQ177. Bikes had pretty much been sent to me by uh, manufacturers to review for them. I think I was up to about 13 or 15 at one time, and now I'm down to nine, I believe. I've sold off a few bikes. I still keep everything in my garage, and I'm still able to get both my vehicles in the garage, so that's a win. But you gotta be careful on how many uh, bikes you store. But yeah, riding these bikes has absolutely helped my knees. I don't have near the pain in my knees at all. And uh, of course, it's building muscles around all the joints in my knee, and uh, that's really helped me a lot. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and uh, talk about uh, bike safety on the next video. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this one down right here. What we call the uh, 911 Memorial. And uh, here's where we're going to end the video, and uh, then we'll start a new one up. Again, share, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys on the next video.